Guys, I am so excited. This week on How I Shot It, I get to interview Megan Allen. Hey, Megan, thanks so much for joining us this week. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited. You are like one of our most liked photographers in the MagMod community on Instagram. <laughs> it seems like every time you post a photograph there, uh, people just go crazy over it. So I'm, I'm excited that you can be on here, that you can talk about some of these photos and uh, let people kind of know, like dive into the mind of Megan, if that makes sense. That's a terrifying prospect right there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Megan, hey, tell everyone where, where you're based out of. Yeah, um, so I am a destination wedding photographer based out of Dayton, Ohio, which okay. probably doesn't make a lot of sense, but basically I say, take me wherever you want, just get me out of Ohio, and, and it works. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, well, you know Ohio's what? great, but I love to travel. <laughs> it's, it's a good hub, though. I mean, you're like right in the middle it's of It's a everywhere. fantastic hub. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, it's great, because I can get direct flights out to LA, to New York City, anywhere pretty much in the US, right from like one of the three airports nearby. So it's nice. That's right. That's awesome. And Megan, what's your website and your Instagram so people can find you? Yeah, uh, my website is www.choosestudio22.com. And my Instagram is at studio 22 photography. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah. So Megan, with that, like I said, I'm so excited to talk to you. I, I just want to jump right in if, if you're cool with that. I want to actually talk about one of these photographs that is <laughs> mind-blowing it's this one where you did like a uh you shot through a mag mask you didn't even use flash lighting on this which i think is so fun for people to see um tell us about this photograph <laughs> well i have to give props to my friend chad winstead of when nah, we don't need to give photography. props to chad you don't need to give props to nah chad. you chad. know yeah. <laughs> he's gonna get a big head he's gonna get a big head from it um but Chad's no he guy. had a wonderful idea and so he shot through a mag mask and I saw it and so I called him on this wedding day in particular I was like yo I like your idea but I'm gonna go do it a little bit better is that okay and he he, he said okay you know go for it let's challenge accepted so uh so I went out that day um and his concept was great so I used a mag mask um from the mag beam set and it's mm -hmm. I forget the name of it but it's the triangles um and what I did was I actually had a wedding guest hold it up to the sky for me and I laid on the ground shot through it and got just the blue sky and then I brought the couple out and I said hey I just need you to stand up on this hill let me get a silhouette of you guys real quick you can go back to your wedding and so boom quick and then I actually put them into post and made a double exposure love it because um Sony doesn't have in-camera double exposures yet but yeah so it was really fun and it's it's fun. Everybody always asks how it happened, but it was actually a really easy, fun way to use MagMod in a different in a different way. And Chad, good job. Now now go make something better. So I have to beat you again. <laughs> there you go. Challenge extended. No, I love that. I love you know, I think it's fun because on these how I shot it interviews, every time we've done this, every single photograph has been about lighting. But sometimes it's about using the tools to just create interesting things. And I, and I think as photographers, we're always looking around, we're always looking for things that we can use yeah. in our photographs. And here you just simply pulled out, you know, a little metal mask, shot two exposures, yeah. combined them together in post and created this really cool piece of art. Like I could truly, if this was my photograph, in fact, maybe I'll just act like that's my wife and I, um, but, <laughs> but I could truly see like a large image printed on a house. And when, when people walk in, they're like, oh, that's a, that's a cool piece of art. And then they look close and they're like, wait, is that you guys on your wedding day? And it just, I mean, it's mind blowing. Yeah. So. Well, and that's always my goal is like, obviously beautiful, like traditional portraits are, you know, bread and butter. But I always, my goal every wedding is to try to make something that's kind of a unique art piece that they can put up in their wall. And it doesn't necessarily scream wedding a lot of times, mm -hmm. but it's something that they can carry on with them through the years. And that's a really cool talking piece. So regardless of whether it's a mag mask or something, I always try to make something that's just kind of more like, It'll make people stop when they walk in their homes and yeah. then they realize it's a wedding photo and then it's, you know, it's more fun. So that's awesome. Love yeah. it. Yeah. Fantastic. Hey, Megan, let's jump into this other photograph. This one, um, it's a silhouette shot, which I think sometimes silhouettes are hard, especially when you have light coming in behind them like a flash. Um, I think sometimes people will struggle having that light almost bleed too much and not getting a really defined edges and, and things like that. So can you tell us a little bit about how you set this, this photograph up, kind of what, you know, your lighting was? 
Yeah, yeah. So this one was really fun. Um, this is a really cool estate that's actually local to me. And um, it's a newer venue. So every time I go, I'm like, okay, how can I make a really cool image for them, you know, to continue to make business for themselves too. Yeah. Um, so awesome. this one's really neat. This is the front of the estate. And they have a really interesting light system inside that they can change all of the house lights to whatever color the couple wants. So this couple had wanted a more purple maroon feel to the wedding. So the estate actually turned all of the colors inside purple. So when I saw that, I was like, okay, how can we make the outside match the inside? Mm. And so what I did, this is actually a three light setup. And um, on either side, you'll see that there is a purple gel and a magenta gel being used. And they're aimed up and at the trees. Um, it was autumn. So most of the leaves had fallen off, but what was left, you know, we wanted to illuminate. So we did that. And then to do the silhouette, I did a, like a light bomb. And so we turned an AD 200 with a mag sphere mm-hmm. right behind them and aimed it at a white wall or a white door in this case. And it was very, I mean, it was inches from the couple and about half power. And the goal, like you said, when you, when you're trying to do this, a lot of times the bleed will get too intense. Um, what I've found is if you keep it about hip level on a couple and really block the light, mm. it's going to, they're going to be able to kind of control that bleed. Um, so this one, it was a couple takes because we do, um, I, with silhouettes, I try to get them moving because a lot of times silhouettes become stagnant. Yeah. So I was like, Hey, just, just twirl your bride around, have fun with it for a minute. And so we did maybe four or five hits, um, of this shot. And then the one time that everything kind of lined up you know, that's yeah. the one you run with. So I always tell people, don't be afraid to take a few shots to make sure you get the right movement and everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love everything about it. So you use mag gels in the trees to complement the house and then you use the mag sphere behind them to help kind of spread it and really kind of brighten that, uh, that door. Is that right? Yep. Cool. Yep. Love it. Love it. Love it. So let's talk about this image, um, where you have this couple, it looks like in a, in a theater of some kind. It doesn't look like a movie theater. It almost looks like a, yeah. like a, like an art theater or not an art theater. What am I, uh, like a, like where they do plays it and is. stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's actually at the, um, Dayton art Institute nearby. And this is their theater where they put on plays and, um, music, music hall type, um, events Mm -hmm. um so this couple is they love art they wanted to really highlight the venue and so for me i thought this was a really cool area i don't see a lot of people shoot in the theater they usually go into the the art galleries themselves so i wanted to try to do something with the venue with the with the theater Mm -hmm. um this is actually it looks far more complex than what it is um the really nice thing about the art institute is they light everything very well on their own Mm -hmm. so all of the window, like the the lighting on the sides and then the overhead with the sky was all there. So I didn't have to do anything. The nice thing was I had just got the mag box, which is incredible. And um, so I had an assistant with me and he went in to the row ahead of them and just took it right over top of them. Mm-hmm. And then in post, I cloned him out. And it was beautiful because the mag box was able to match the soft light of everything else much better than anything else in the MagMod lineup could have done. So it was a really nice intro to being able to use the MagBox. I was like, oh, this is the perfect opportunity. Yeah. So yeah, really simple setup to, uh, no, actually it was 18200 in the MagBox. And I want to say it was at like a 16th of a power. So it really wasn't even that much power going to it. It was just a nice soft kiss to wrap around their faces to yeah. emulate the light that was already there. It's a fantastic shot. I, I got to ask, you know, it's funny because typically one of the things that bothers me in wedding photos, my own wedding photos, not anyone else's, but is when I see exit signs. But your exit signs actually feel like I, they complement the scene really well. Did you did yeah. uh, did you blur those or something or did, was that just naturally how? No. OK, that's just how it felt. And usually I take exit signs out because it bugs the crap out of me, too. Yeah. But those I was like, OK, it actually works for I, this, I like it, one time. Yeah it, it, but, yeah, it feels like one, there's the symmetry of it. And two, the yeah. fact that it kind of breaks up the the darkness, the dark doors back there. I don't know. It just it works. It's funny. Yeah. I, I, I My eyes were drawn to that. I'm like, wow, yeah. it's, I think that's the first pair of exit signs I've actually enjoyed. So <laughs> that actually is a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. I never leave them in images, especially ones that like I, I work hard to edit like I did on this one. But mm-hmm. for some reason, like you said, I was like, oh, it's actually it, it works this time. So yeah. probably will never happen again. But, you know, it works this time. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> well, that's a great shot. So, Megan, you were recently out in uh, Iceland and you actually yeah. went with uh, the incredible Sarah France, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So, so, yep. and you guys were out there shooting and I imagine it was super cold. 
Uh, yes. <laughs> probably freezing your bones off. Cold. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so t tell me, there, here's a photograph here of this, uh, I don't know if it's a bride and groom or a set of models or something, but it's this incredible shot inside the, the, the plane there in Iceland. Tell me about this photograph, how you set this up. Yeah, so um, Iceland was amazing. This couple is actually the couple that um, the, the now infamous fire shot um, that happened at their wedding. So they are the couple that had the building fire. We went out and shot with the fire mm. and they've become really good friends of mine. And so we were joking one day and I was like, Hey, you know what? You've got fire. You need ice, like fire and ice just to, you know, compliment one another. Let's go to Iceland. And they looked at me and they're like, okay. <laughs> so like, that was That's the rad. extent of the uh, conversation. So we went. Um, and then when I was honored enough to be part of the Sony program, I had met Sarah and I said, Hey, Sarah, you should come with us. You know, it'll be fun. So Sarah came along and that was, that was really cool. Um, but for this, for this image in particular, we actually hiked out to the DC rec, which is about an hour hike. Um, in that day, technically it was warm. Um, it was like twenties, but, um, it was, it was land all the way out. So the wind just like, you know, tears up your face when it's that cold. So we were dying by the time we got there. Um, but yeah, so it was, it was a fairly nice day, but the nice thing was in, in Iceland terms on in winter, it was a very, um, even day like there was no wild transitions in weather so we could actually plan this and play with it um so when we got out there we we knew we would have very limited time to actually have the couples down to standard clothing because we were mm -hmm. all in four or five layers um so she actually has on a couple pairs of sweatpants underneath her dress oh wow um yeah so we actually so we lined them up and it was fun because sarah is a master at constant lights so what we would do is in each setting, we would figure out how she was going to use her constant lights. And then I was going to turn it into a mag mod shot with my strobes. So ahead of time, we planned everything out and then we would take turns lighting for each other. So with this one in particular, I knew where I wanted them. So I had set him up outside and knew what the sun was doing to him. And I wanted it to emulate the same for her, even though she was in shadow. Hmm. So I had Sarah stand on the outside of the plane on camera left with an AD 200 and a mag sphere and a quarter CTO just to kind of give it a little bit more warmth to the, to her. And I think it was about a quarter power. It was pretty high. Um, and we just shot, she's just straight on with her to hit almost like the sun to get a very, you know, dynamic look on her as well. Yeah. So it's just a single light to kind of emulate the same thing that Dylan was getting from the sun on the right hand side. But it was, it was a quick shot and it turned out pretty cool. Yeah, no, I love. Well, I imagine it was quick because they probably want to get warmed up right afterwards. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. I love it, and I love how again I've mentioned this in, in previous how I shot at videos, but one of my favorite types of composition tricks is using subframing in photographs. And in this one, yeah. you you have him subframed over to the right. I think also what what stands out, and granted, you might have done this as well, but I think a lot of us we immediately will say, oh, okay, I'll put the couple in that little frame over there to the right. Um, and, and, you know, and I don't know, shoot through the, the plane or whatever, which, which would be a cool photograph. But I think what I love about this is how you isolated the two subjects. You have him over here subframed in the plane. You got her on the left, but you got this equal lighting, both of them being lit by two totally different sources, but yet yeah. it complements itself really well. So it's a cool photograph. Love yeah, it. Thank you. Thank you. I try to do a little bit of difference. You know, a lot of times I feel like I get stuck in the rut of thinking since I have a couple, I need to put them together in the frame. And I think if you play, you can separate your subject and still have a really neat wedding photo. Um, obviously, you're not going to do every photo like that, but it's kind of fun to play and like put them in different places in the frame. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, speaking of playing, to wrap this up, you got this uh, really cool shot uh, with the the champagne bottles. Uh, is it yeah. champagne? Uh, where they're spraying yes, each other is. and they're having fun and the emotion and the laughter and the playing. and uh, yeah. yeah, tell us about this one. Yeah. I mean, obviously I have so many friends that have incredible champagne shots. So shout out to every one of my friends that has inspired me to attempt to do this on my own. Um, but yeah, so I had this couple, um, she, she's incredible. I actually met her because I photographed her. She's one of the Hamilton cast members. And mm. so when she got engaged, she reached out and said, Hey, I want to do something fun. Will you meet me in Kansas city with my fiance? And I was like, absolutely. So Going in, I knew they would be a little bit more game to do some really random things. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I told her, I was like, go buy a bunch of champagne. Don't ask questions. Just bring it to the shoot. She's <laughs> like, all right, cool. Um, That's so awesome. It was a lot of fun. Um, this one we actually did in the subdivision parking lot where her fiance, Zach, is staying. 
he's actually in the Book of Mormon and he tours. So he was there on tour. So we're sitting out here in this random subdivision parking lot and I'm sure they're really excited about us spraying everywhere. But um, there was no cars around, so it was fine. Um, But yeah, I say that because I just want people to know like you don't need a lot of space and you don't need a super dark area. You just need you know, somewhere to create. So this is actually done in a parking lot right outside his house. Um, So for this one, it's actually two AD 200s and they're both actually behind the subjects and they're cross lit. So the camera left light is a mag grid mag sphere combo and it's aimed at Zach. And then camera right is a mag grid mag sphere combo and it's aimed at Sam. So they're actually being lit cross and because of that it's also hitting and kind of wrapping around a little bit yeah um so yeah so i put it on high speed sync i kind of told him you know put your thumb over the over the bottle and just start spraying and you know go spray each other as much as it will you know not cause you to call off the wedding <laughs> um, and go for it and uh, so they had fun clearly um yeah. but yeah high speed sync is really nice and the grid and the sphere combo allowed it to keep a soft light but keep the spill off the, the lower half of their bodies because I really wanted it just to be about the spray and their emotion. So I really love that combo and I use it a lot in my photography. What, uh, you know, I think one of the big things on this is the the aperture setting. Do you remember what your aperture was roughly? Like, did, did you shoot it wide open or I imagine you probably shot it like no. F8 or something like that or, you know, even... even. I want to say this was 5.6. Okay. Five, it, it, was four, it was either around the 4 to 5.6 area. Yeah. So... Yeah, I awesome. try to, um, I'm not, I, it's funny because I, I see a lot of wedding photographers that like to stay wide open. Um, I actually love to start closing it down a bit just to add interest and diversity to a gallery. Yeah. Um, and so I, I feel like we shouldn't be afraid to stop, uh, to stop it down and, you know, get a little bit more depth into the photos. So, yeah, no, absolutely. I totally agree with you. I, I've been trying to do a little bit more of that as well. Um, just trying to in- incorporate some of the environment where you can actually see it. And I, I think the trick yeah. is, is you still, I think the biggest thing is when you do that, uh, using light to kind of carve out your subject and then, yep. you know, be able to have the, the, the scene behind them still in focus. I think it, it helps out a lot. So I love this shot. I, I Jesse think- LaPlante is an incredible photographer that does that. So if any of you want to see somebody absolutely kill high apertures, yeah. And the carve out light, Jesse LaPlante is who you want to look at. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Jesse, and then, um, you know, I, Jesse does a shot like this as well with the champagne, if I'm not mistaken. I know Jason Vincent he, does. He might. Or no, Jesse, Jason does. Jason Jay- has a fantastic one. Yeah, And Jesse, I know Jared has one too, Jared Gant. Okay. I, and Jesse, actually, what I'm thinking about Jesse is the colors. He does the, yes, the color ones. Very bold colors. Yeah. Yeah. So. Anyhow, they're all incredible photographers. If you guys, as we're mentioning these names, if you've never heard of these people or if you, uh, you know, haven't, go follow, go haven't, check them out. Yeah, haven't seen them in the community, definitely go check them out because they're all incredible photographers. Just like you, Megan. Megan, you, you, <laughs> you rock it. And uh, truly, I, I, you know, are, are the images that you've talked about today and the things that you've mentioned are things that now I can basically go, hey, I'm going to try this on my next shoot. And that's why we do I these. Can. We always post these on Fridays because uh, we hope that it kind of inspires people as they go into their shoot on the weekend. They can yes. look at this and say, you know what? Hey, I'm going to try this. I'm going to, you know. Yeah. So, and you gave us all yeah. some really good ideas. So. Absolutely. Go forth and create and then like tag me so I can see what you've done. I want to see. There you go. <laughs> you know, and that's what I love about this as well, Megan. I think I think it's important to note that um, it, it, one of the keys to being a good photographer is being a good person as well. And I love I feel like every time yeah. I've done one of these interviews that people are like, Hey, I want to see what you guys are doing as well. Like tag me and ask me questions. And yeah, you know, I think it's great. So, yeah. Like my big thing is lift as you climb and we're, we're all in this together. So I, I love the camaraderie, especially within the Magmod community, especially like I see it in fearless. I see it in Magmod. Mm-hmm. Um, just the willingness to help and inspire, like we're all in this together. So I want to see everybody, get a better handle on light. And I, I love learning from everybody in the community too, because I just feel like lighting is such a fun thing. And a lot of times it can feel daunting, but it's not, you know, and, and especially within the magmatic community, there's so many people willing to share, you know, what yeah. they're doing. And it really inspires me to keep trying to play and, and take it to the next step. Yeah. I love it. Those are good words to end on. <laughs> we need to For tweet sure. that. We need to, we need to tweet that out. <laughs> That was fantastic, Megan. Hey, thank you so go. much. And, and again, just so everyone can find you, let's say your, your website one more time. It's Choose yeah. 22 Studio. Choose Studio 22. Oh, I'm sorry. Choose Studio choose 22. Choose Studio 22. Yep. And then your and Instagram. Then Instagram is 
Yeah, at Studio 22 Photography. And I definitely, I love, I I try to post behind the scenes on there and just random shenanigans shenanigans from the wedding day. Um, So definitely come and follow along because I love, you know, sharing the nonsense that we, we dream up together. So. (laughs) <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Definitely. I, 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 yeah. If you're not following Megan, go check her out. So, Hey, super appreciate you. Thanks so much for being on the show this, uh, this week. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Can't wait to see everybody else. Absolutely. Thanks, Megan. Take care. Thanks everyone. Thanks for joining us and be sure to join us every Friday for these, how I shot it. There's so much to learn.